This movie made me depressed. There's no other way to say it. It just, it made me sad. It was so much potential and it was wasted. It was just wasted. And my fear is the audience is going to eat this shit up and they're going to love it. And they're going to say it's amazing. And they're going to say it's great. And look at our rocking star. Yeah, she's he did it again. But it's just... No. So it took me about an hour to get to the theater today and about an hour and a half to get back home. And that's a long time to think to yourself. And during that whole time, I was just thinking, how am I going to review this movie? I just want to say one thing before I get started, because once I get started, you know how I am. Please listen to what I have to say, then respond to what I have to say in the comments below, because I want to hear what you guys have to say. But I don't want you to hear one negative word out of my mouth and then all of a sudden you guys flood the comments and don't even bother to really listen to what I have to say. The movie opens up with this montage flash forward where a woman who we kind of find out her identity later on in the film, she declares Rocky the biggest criminal in history and basically signed his death warrant. He's, he's, he has to die now. And we don't really know why. We actually don't even really know that it's Rocky yet, technically, even though the way they shot it, you'd know who it is. And to be quite honest with you, my problem started there. Because I actually thought the beginning was a trailer for another movie. It just, because it was so montage and there was no introduction to anything, and there was just so much fast, fast, rapid cutting, that I was just, like, oh, I'm watching a trailer or something. Okay, cool. And then the title pops up and it says, Rocking Star Yash. And I was like, oh, this is the intro to the movie. Uh-oh. But I said, okay, it's the first few minutes. It's a little intro prologue. Whatever. Not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. So then from there, journalist comes in and he's a big deal, apparently. And all the news stations want uh, an interview from him because he has this new book about El Dorado. And it's it's what it's about. The City of Gold. That's what this film's about. The City of Gold, KGF. And I thought that was a little interesting, to be honest with you. It was an interesting twist. Because why not? Why not have it be there? Because it sets the tone that this is going to be a mythological tale. And if you don't get that, in the basically in the scene right after that, you, you see the, the birth of Rocky. Um, and you learn that his mother dies, and, and or she's going to die and at a very young age the way he's born is like some sort of basically out of mythology like just the way just the way they shot it just the way it was and it was juxtaposed to this other individual who basically takes over the minds and you know at this point i'm like okay this is going to be interesting because it just looks like it's going to be a mythological tale you know of something bigger than life you know there's a line that the mom says that i really i really enjoyed actually i actually wrote it down it says they say you can't Be happy with money, but without money, you cannot die peacefully because the mom essentially can't get the treatment she deserves because she didn't have money. And that, that, that really stuck out to me. That was actually really a well, well done piece of dialogue. But honestly, from there, the movie just, I don't know. It it wouldn't, this film reviews hard because I don't, I really wanted this movie to be really good. And it wasn't, and it sucks that it wasn't. The biggest thing that I need to talk about, and it, it is the lack of character. And you can put all the hero moments you want in a film. You can put him. You can put Rocking Star Yash on the title. You can shoot him beautifully and make him look like center stage at all times. But if you don't write character for your character, I just don't care. To illustrate my point, I'm going to read out some things that I wrote down, and I want to know what you guys think. My mom died when she was 25. I was forced to live on the streets. While on the streets, someone told me power is everything. I took him seriously. I started to beat up police officers. I did so, so I can get attention of the local gangs. Why? Because I wanted power. After I get the attention of the police officers, and I get older, and I get hardened, I start killing the 
rival gangs and I kill gang leader after gang leader after gang leader. My whole intention is just for power. I just want power. Do you like me? Let's say some of you out there did like me. Okay. Um, why? Why would you like this person? Am I doing it for like a Robin Hood type character where I'm stealing from the poor, taking the power away from those who abuse the power and giving it back to the people? No, no, I'm not doing that. But that would be a reason why you'd like someone, right? Yeah. Uh, am I a vigilante? Am I killing gang leaders because they're also, you know, they're they're just continually putting people in harm's way and, and innocent people are dying and, and these people are murderers or rapists, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and they deserve to meet their maker. Am I am I that person? No. No, I'm 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 just doing it for power. So what's there to like about Rocky? Because I just read you everything that happens in the film in terms of character development. You don't have any motivations for him. There's no There's no there's no explanation as to why he needs the power. There's no motivations to what he's trying to accomplish. What are his goals? And because he's the star of the film, the filmmakers just assume you care. I call this the Salman Khan paradox. Where you're so popular that the writer, the director, they don't feel like they have to write a character behind their lead they just know we'll throw them in some action scenes we'll have them say a line or two of cool dialogue and the audience they'll 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 accept it we'll throw in some nice hero music we'll have everyone around him fear him slash respect him we'll heighten him up through exposition but we don't actually have to show these people being people. Of course not, because they're gods. But as a result of elevating them to this status, you just know that they're never going to be in harm's way. You know that they're never going to die. You know that anytime they're in a troubled situation, they're going to win. And the issue with that is, for someone like me, and maybe not for people out there like you guys who disagree with me. But for me, if you don't have that anchor, if you don't have that that little piece of humanity, I just don't care. And the film had plenty of opportunities to make me care. Because the fact that there's no character development is really my only gripe. I mean, there's so much story here. But there's no character development that you just... It, it's its hard to, to sit here and defend this movie. I mean, the film has an unrelenting pace from the very beginning all the way until the end. It never lets go. I mean, I genuinely think the longest scenes in the entire film were the songs. And just think about that. Think about that. The longest scenes are the songs. How are you supposed to grow to enjoy these characters if you only sit with them for 30, 40 seconds, two minutes here or there, but for a movie that's two and a half hours and you present zero character development, I, I just find that to be unacceptable. I really do. And it really pains me to say this because I was really looking forward to this film. I mean, let's also talk about the other things that were set up for rocking stars character he's a killer and not just any killer he's an amazing killer never gets shot never gets a scratch on him never gets anything never gets punched in the face i mean he's literally perfect and that's fine i get it it works you're a superhero i've already said that the problem with that though is the literal second half of the movie destroys that setup now, some of you out there might say, how does it destroy it? Well, up until the moment in which one of the gang leaders, and I forget because there's so many damn names and stuff, but when they basically go up to Rocking Star and they say, I want you to kill Garuda, or whatever his name is, 
and I will give you Bombay. I will give you what you want if you go and kill this guy. He says, okay. And he goes and does that and fails. And that leads to the second part where he succeeds, of course. The issue, though, is he's been taking everything his entire life. His entire life. We're shown that. Of all the things that were shown, we're shown him using brute force to take what he wants. Why on God's green earth would he want to accept a deal from the enemy? Why? Why wouldn't he just take it? Why wouldn't he just kill everybody? I mean, honestly, my honest opinion is it was written this way as an excuse to have this big old action set piece all throughout the KGF, you know, the the whole mines, in my opinion. And it was also to set up the idea of the sequel. We need this guy. You know, we're going to hire Rocky to do what he needs to do. And he's going to win the day. And he's going to take these gold fields from the bad guys and, and restore honor and et cetera, et cetera. But then when the movie ends, the people in charge are going to say, no, Rocky's bad. He's the most, look what he did. He, he just went out and ruthlessly killed all these people. And he's the bad guy now. And so now the sequel is going to be about him taking out everybody and basically becoming the top dog and all this crap. Okay, whatever. But the thing is, you set your character up as the ultimate badass. But then you make him become a lapdog of someone else because some other guy said he will give you Bombay. Huh? That kind of goes against his character a little bit, don't you think? Especially since that's not very powerful of him to just let this other guy tell him what to do. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think so, though. The amount of action we're shown where he goes and he he, he kills all of the people to the point where he's just... He, he causes like six boats full of gunmen just to turn around because he's the only one he's the only one alive. I mean, how can you be that powerful and not just take what you want? And and not and speaking of gun people, you can't shoot him. He can't get hurt a little bit. I mean, can you just that's I understand that these are supposed to be films about entertainment and fun and this there's this big superstar, but can you humanize him a little bit? Get him shot once. Get him beat up a little bit. Make him seem like, oh no, our hero. Oh no, he's he's in trouble. Nothing. Nothing. And you don't even explain the motivation for so many of the different things throughout the movie. I mean, when he finally does kill the guy at the very end, the bad guy, there's no explanation for that. Instead, you get weird cuts to other parts of this drama building, but... You're always leaving Yash. You never stay with Yash. He's the main character. Rocky's the main character, and you're always leaving him. You're always leaving him to, to fulfill other purposes of the story that are so inconsequential. It's ridiculous. If the movie would have just slowed down and had more intimate moments, true intimate moments, with him, not 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 characters in the, in the gold fields telling fables about these people. No, having actual moments with dialogue, normal human dialogue, not fucking grand epic lines of bullshit, but real human dialogue. I would have loved this movie because the production design is there. The visual effects are there. Okay, whether that's practical or special effects, practical practical and special the same thing, but I meant, you know what guys, CGI and all that stuff because there are CGI moments in this in this film without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, there's a scene where, where Rocking Star throws his motorcycle and hits some guy in the face. I mean, there's no way that was real. And that's not a slight at the movie. I'm just saying it was good. I didn't, I didn't mind it. I didn't mind the production value of the film. I didn't mind the acting of the film. I didn't mind the characters of the film. There's so many things I did not mind. It was just the unrelenting pace caused me to have a huge disconnect with our main character. And maybe this is a movie... That should have been a TV show. And it probably would have been a really good one. 
one that you could really allow the story to breathe. You really get to meet each and every one of these characters. You understand what the characters' motivations are. That they're not just cardboard cutouts of like, oh, this is a villain, this is what a villain would say, here's a hero, this is what a hero would say. And then there's other over top, over the top moments in the 80s where he gets a speeding ticket and he has Black Hawk helicopters follow him and all these, I mean, it's just like, I guess that's gonna be in the sequel, but I just, I don't know, man. This movie really bummed me out. I mean, just look at the lack of energy I have of just talking about it. Just really bummed me out. Because there's just there's just so many just indefensible moments. Him dealing with the other Don's daughter. And he's just basically doesn't do anything to convince her that he's... I don't know. They don't go on a date. They don't have conversations. They don't do anything. Like, he's always causing her a problem... And yet they become lovers. What? Is it because he decided to protect the mom in the streets the one time? Then that automatically means that he's this person that she should fall in love with and that she should care and cry about when he dies? I don't get that. I mean, then they're not even talking about the scene with the, if you can touch me, you can have me or whatever. And then he, you see him disappear and he drives through the, the back of the thing with... A tanker truck and fills the whole floor with gasoline and smokes sick like the, and the way that scene started was over the top and just rocking stars there he's dancing someone calls one of the bosses and he's like rocky's here and then two seconds later he says oh my god it's out of control send all your men what rocky wasn't even doing anything he was just there dancing i <laughs> What was what was out of control about that? I I mean, the movie did a very good job at trying to elevate every single small little thing to the highest degree. The, the filmmaker always wanted you to believe that the, the stakes were way up here. But the reality is, because there was no setups, the stakes were always down here. They were like below off camera. Like, they want you to believe it's all the way up here. But then really, it's just off. It's, it's just not. It just doesn't matter. Nothing really matters. I, I didn't feel any tension. I didn't feel any moments where I was like, oh, oh, oh shit. Like, and I guess I keep saying there's no motivation. There's no setup. There's no plants and payoffs. When we finally get to the gold fields at the end, we don't really know what the fuck he's doing. There's these blueprints, these, this convoluted plot line of, you just, you just never know what he's doing. I mean, he's this one scene where he's tapping the pole, like, we don't know what the fuck that means. Is he timing it? But if he's timing it, why we don't know what he's timing because he's just looking down this hallway and he's. But what? What is he? What? And then there's. It's just. But you don't really. You never like. The film tries to show him working, but the cutting is so fast, and the, the, there's more information, and then the guards are just non-humans, and they they shoot. They're able to shoot a kid and a wife in one shot, but when Yash is going to get this like tool they miss like 17 times that's the that's the foolishness that i'm talking about it's just i it, it you know he's invincible and maybe that doesn't bother some people but it bothers me man and the film had so much going for it this movie made me depressed there's no other way to say it it just it made me sad it was so much potential and it was wasted it was just wasted and my fear is the audience is going to eat this shit up and they're going to love it and they're going to say it's amazing and they're going to say it's great and look at our rocking star yeah she's he did it again but it's just no you should write to these filmmakers and and, and say hey man i loved what you, were, what you were doing with your action set pieces i love what you were doing with your production design but give some character to rocking star yash why not it's not hard it's not hard. Give him some motivations. Because right now he has none. I wouldn't even argue he's the main character because he's just he doesn't talk very much and he just pops in and out and it's just the I don't I don't know, man. I don't know. It's sad. What did you guys think of the movie? Let me know in the comments and um yeah. This sucks. It sucks. There's no other way to put it, but That'll do it for this one.